guys. So today we are gonna do a lot. Um, now, how hard today is really is dependent on how well you remember some things from Algebra 1 and Geometry. So in the warm-up folder, I have some extra practice uh, that is a review of those things. It may be a good idea for you guys to do those first, especially if you have trouble on this first section that we're about to go over here. Um, but really what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a lot of exponent and root and radical things today. So to start, um, one thing that you guys really do need to be familiar with, without a calculator, um, there's some certain powers you really just need to know. And these are the ones that are going to come up kind of most often, and when you have non-calculator stuff, you just need to be familiar with them. So, for example, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64, okay? You just really got to be familiar with those values because they'll come up more frequently. 3 squared is 9, 3 to the 3rd is 27, 3 to the 4th is 81, 4 squared is 16, 4 to the 3rd is 64, 4 to the 4th is 256, we've got 25, 125, and 625. Uh, 6 squared through 15 squared, you'll need to know all those. And then 10 to the anything, because remember 10 to the anything, that's just however many zeros you're going to put at the end. So those are, once again, you really need to be familiar with those without a calculator. So to review, um, this is going to review a lot of what you did from Algebra 1 and Geometry. So simplifying radicals, um, there's two methods you can use. One method, if you're pretty good with mental math, is to think about what perfect cube can, I, or sorry, perfect cube, what perfect square are we going to divide out of this number? So that's why it's familiar, good to be familiar with those perfect squares. Okay, 4, 9, 16, 25, and all of those. So if 32 is divisible by one of those perfect squares, then we can divide it out. So for example, 32 is divisible by 16. The square root of 16 is 4, so 4 could come out, and if we divided 16, we'd be left with 2. The other method for simplifying radicals is to make a factor tree. So what I can do is I can take 32 and break it down into all of its prime factors. So 32 is 4 times 8, 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, 8 goes to 4 and 2, and 4 goes to 2 and 2. Every number at the bottom now is a prime number. So what we do is we look at all of those numbers at the bottom, and we're looking for pairs. They don't have to be right next to each other, okay, as long as it's just two of the same number in the bottom. Every number that's on every pair, that number gets moved to the outside. So I have a 2 and a 2 on the outside. Everything that's left stays on the inside. So that's the other way that you can work out simplifying those square roots. Um, if you are not familiar with that, there's a lot of extra practice on that file in the warm-up folder. So either way, this just applies to 4 root 2. Negative exponents. So if you remember, negative exponents move something to the other side of a fraction. So 4 to the negative 2 would become 1 over 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16. Fraction exponents we're going to look at a lot today. So this one you may not know right now, and that's okay. Um, one half actually is the same thing as square root, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now D and E um, look pretty similar, but what's important to notice about D and E is that they are different problems. You are not going to get the same answer for D and E. So you need to be familiar with the, what the difference between those two things is. So on D, you have a negative times 7 squared. Because PEMDAS, okay, you're doing order of operations first. Whereas on E, you have a negative 7 that is being squared. So on E, I have negative 7 times negative 7, which is 49. Whereas on D, I have a negative 7 times 7, which is negative 49. Um, while that might be easy to see at that step, it's important to know E is the same thing as if you had F x squared and you were evaluating f of negative 7. Whereas D is the same thing if you had uh, negative x squared and you're evaluating f of 7. So that's kind of what it looks like in function form. All right, moving on to some exponent properties. So remember with exponents, if you have the same base you can, and they're multiplied together, you can add the exponents. So x squared times x to the fourth, I add those exponents. y to the third times y to the fifth, I add those exponents. If you have a power to a power, that's when you multiply the exponents. So this would become x to the fourth, y to the sixth. A power divided by one, same basis again, has to be the same base, you subtract the exponents. So 7 minus 4 would give me 3. Uh, if you have one on top and bottom, I typically go wherever the bigger number is, and then subtract. So for example, so 8 minus 3, so this would be 7 
or x to the third over y to the fifth. So 8 minus 3 would give us 5. All right, on the next one, again, power to a power. So this would be x to the sixth over y cubed. Uh, negative exponents, remember those flip our fractions. So what I can do is I can flip this to y over x squared, and now it's to the positive third. Both of those get that exponent, so that's y to the third over x to the sixth. All right, adding uh, and multiplying operations with roots. In order to add or subtract roots, you have to have the same number under the root. So 2 root 3 plus 5 root 3 would be 7 root 3. You can only add them if it's the same root. If this was plus root 2, I would have to leave it as plus root 2. There was no way to combine those together. Multiplying, though, it's okay if it's different numbers under the root. So when you multiply, you multiply the outside numbers together, and they stay outside the root. You multiply the inside numbers together, and they stay inside the root. And then finally, rationalizing. So rationalizing is getting the square root out of the bottom. So what you do is you multiply by that square root, top and bottom. So that's just a review of a lot of the exponent and radical stuff that you guys have done before this point. All of that is going to be important to know for today. So if you're not comfortable with any of that, work on some of those practice problems that are in the warm-up folder. All right, so what we're going to start with are rational exponents and rewriting rational exponents to fraction exponents. Sorry, rational exponents to uh, root form. So rational, is a fra uh, rational exponents are fraction exponents. The way it works is you have a root and a power. The root is at the bottom of the fraction. Okay, what I kind of think about is think about a tree. A tree has roots in the bottom. Okay, so the root is in the bottom. Um, one thing to keep in mind, so one thing that you want to keep in mind um, is that you can take an odd root of a negative number, okay? For example, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. What you cannot take a cube, or an even root of a negative number. So the square root of negative 1 is imaginary, okay? The fourth root of negative 1 is not going to exist, okay? Because you can't multiply any positive or negative times itself to get a negative. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite uh, these expressions. So x to the 3 fourths, like we said, the bottom number is the root that you're taking. The top number is the exponent. So what this is is the fourth root of x to the third. Now you can write it like that, or you could write it as the fourth root of x to the third. The order that you do those in won't matter. Now practically, when we start doing this with actual values, it's going to be easier to take the root and then raise it to a power because that's going to give you a smaller number and then you'll work to a bigger number. And if you're trying to do these without a calculator, it's just going to make things a little easier. All right, so y to the 7 ninths, that's going to be the ninth root of y to the seventh power. All right, so this one, um, we're xy to the negative 1 fourth. Notice x does not have an exponent, so it's not moving. y is raised to the negative 1 fourth, so that's going to move it to the bottom. And then 1 fourth as an exponent is the fourth root of y. All right, and then on the next one, x and y both have the 1 half exponent, so that is the square root of xy. They are both under the radical. All right, let's try the next one. We're going to go the opposite way. We're going to rewrite this into rational exponents. So xy has a power of 4 and, an x, and a root of 3. So the root's the bottom number of the fraction. You also could write that as x to the 4 thirds, y to the 4 thirds. All right, looking at the next one. Um, x would be to the 1 eighth. Y would be to the 4 eighths, which I could reduce to 1 half. Looking at the next one, uh, negative 5 is being raised to the 6th power, and we're taking the 3rd root. Well, 6 over 3 reduces just to 2, so this is just negative 5 squared, which is 25. All right, and then on our next one, we're taking the 5th root, so I could rewrite this as x to the 10 over 5 over y to the 1 over 5. 10 over 5, I could just reduce that to x squared. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and show you guys one more step that we're going to do on these um, and a couple examples later on down the road. What we're going to do is we're going to rationalize. So rationalizing is what we did at the very beginning when we had 1 over root 2. You did this in geometry. You might have done it in algebra 1 maybe. But rationalizing means we don't have any square roots in the bottom. Now we'll do this again in some future examples, but I want you to go ahead and see what that looks like. There were two of these problems that need to be rationalized. 1c and 2d. 
because both of those problems have a root in the denominator. It's a little bit easier to see on C. You can tell there's a fourth root in the bottom of that fraction. Well, when it was a square root, okay, if it was 1 over the square root of x, I multiply by the square root of x on top and bottom. The problem here, and we'll talk about this in a second when we get to multiplying, if I have 1 over the fourth root of x, and I multiply by the fourth root of x, I would have the fourth root of x squared. But the fourth root of x squared is still a root. Okay, That's still x to the 2 fourths, which is still x to the 1 half. I still have a root that hasn't helped my problem. So what I need to do instead is I actually would need to multiply by the fourth root of x cubed, because that would give me the fourth root of x to the fourth, which is now a whole number without any roots. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom here by the fourth root of y to the third. So that is going to give me x times the fourth root of y cubed at the top. And then at the bottom now, I have the fourth root. Oops, I forgot the three there. I have the fourth root of y to the fourth. And the fourth root of y to the fourth is just y. Let's look at d. D also needs to be rationalized. Now that one's harder to see because you might forget one-fifth actually means fifth root. So I need this to be a whole number. Well, using exponent properties, if I want this to be a whole number, I want it to just be y. That would be y to the 5 fifths. That would be a whole number. So in order to get there, I would need to multiply by y to the 4 fifths. If I multiply the bottom, I also multiply the top. So that would give me x squared y to the 4 fifths over y. And we'll do some more rationalizing here in a second, but I want you guys just to go ahead and see that and know that that's coming up. All right, so now we're going to look at some problems that if you have a calculator, they're going to be very easy. But I'm going to tell you guys, you have to be familiar with these without a calculator. Do not rely on a calculator to get these done. We're going to do a GIMP kit next class that, again, will be pretty easy with a calculator, but it's not going to help you for the future when you have to know these things without a calculator. All right, so numerically, let's I just go ahead and simplify these. So 27 to the 4 thirds. That means I'm taking the cube root of 27, and then I'm raising it to the fourth power. Cube root 27 is 3. 3 to the 4th is 81. All right, next one, 16 to the 5 fourths. That's the 4th root of 16 to the 5th power. That's 2 to the 5th, which is 32. 4 to the 1 half, we did that at the very beginning. So now we know that's the 2nd root of 4 to the 1st power. That's the square root of 4, which is 2. 4 to the negative 2, okay, that's 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. 4 to the negative 1 half. Now, this one gets missed a lot. A lot of times people think that negative, once you start combining it, will just become a negative 2 or a negative 1 half. It's not actually making this negative. Remember, the negative exponent moves this to the bottom. 4 to the 1 half is the square root of 4, which is 2. All right, 9 to the negative 3 halves. Again, that's 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. So that's 1 over the square root of 9 to the third, which is 1 over 27. All right, we're taking the sixth root of this, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, which means it's 10. Now we're taking the sixth root of this first, and then we're making it negative. Whereas on h, we're trying to take the sixth root of, is this 100,000? 1 million. So we're trying to take the sixth root of 1 million, which we, or of negative 1 million. We cannot take an even root of a negative number. So this one's not possible. But you can take an odd root of a negative number. So the fifth root of negative 100,000 is possible, and that is negative 10. Because a negative 10 times a negative 10 times a negative 10 times a negative 10 times a negative 10 will give you that negative 100,000. All right, so let's go on, uh, and let's look at some of these exponents um, just with some, some more expressions. Again, this is really going to draw on what you guys remember from your exponent properties. So using our exponent properties, what we remember, negative exponents move to the bottom. So this becomes 3 over x to the 3 fifths times x. Same basis, we can combine them together. Uh, that x to the first would be x to the 5 fifths. Now I can add those exponents, and I get x to the 8 fifths. Now the only problem here, again, we need to rationalize. We can't have a root at the bottom, and x to the 8 fifths is actually the fifth root of x to the 8th. So what I'm going to do to make this a whole number is I'm going to figure out 
what do I need as an exponent to get x to a whole number? So if the denominator is 5, 5 over 5 would be good, but multiplying by something won't get me there. 10 out of 5, that would be a whole number. So to get x to the 10 fifths, I would have to multiply by x to the 2 fifths. And multiply the bottom, you also multiply the top. So that would give me x to the 2 fifths, or x to the 10 fifths, which is just x squared. And then I have 3 x to the 2 fifths at the top. And now this is rationalized. All right, on the next one, again, using our exponent properties, power to a power, we can multiply those exponents together. So this would become 27 over 8, and then that would be multiplied, that would be negative 4 over 12. Those 4s are going to simplify, so that's going to be negative 1 third. Negative exponents will flip this fraction, so this is going to become 8 over 27 to the 1 third. That means the cube root, cube root the top and bottom. The cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 27 is 3. All right, and then on the next one, so these x's at the top have the same base, so I can combine those together. In order to add those, I do need a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite that 2 thirds as 6 over 9. I can now add those together. I get x to the 11 ninths. The y's I can subtract, but again, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to make this 5 over 15, make this 3 over 15 and I get y to the 2 fifteenths at the bottom. Again, problem, not rationalized. So I need to multiply by y to the 13 fifteenths, top and bottom. So that gives me x to the 11 ninths, y to the 13 fifteenths at the top, and then just a regular old y left at the bottom. So now we're going to transition into radicals. So like I said, today is not a day that I really enjoy because there's so many small little things to look at. A lot of this you may already be familiar with just because of stuff you've done in previous years. But again, it's, it is a lot of little things today. I promise, though, this unit actually gets easier as opposed to most units when you start off easy. I think, honestly, the first day today is the hardest one of the unit. So radical properties, all right? These are some things you already know. Um, if you have multiplication and it's the same root, so like, for example, the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. Same thing with division, all right? The square root of 6 divided by the square root of 3 is the square root of 2. These properties hold true when we talk about nth root, so like a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root. But it has to be the same root in order to be able to do that operation. All right, so let's look at this first one. These are both cube roots. So we can do just like we do with square roots. Multiply the outsides together and multiply the insides together. So 6 times 12 would be 72. What we can also do is we can simplify cube roots the same way we simplify square roots. So what you can do, again, two methods. You can think, what perfect cube can I divide out of here? Or we can break it down into a factor tree. So perfect cubes, okay, that would be like 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. 72 is divisible by 8. The cube root of 8 is 2, so I could take out that 2. If I divided out 8, I'd be left with 9. So this is 20 cube root of 9. The other way to get there is using a factor tree. So 72 will break it down into its prime factors. So 4, 2, 2, and 2, 3, and 3. So all of my bottom numbers now are all prime numbers. Out of those bottom numbers, since we're talking about a cube root, what I'm looking for now are sets of three as opposed to pairs. Well, out of all those bottom numbers, I do have a set of twos. So two would move to the outside. What's left over at the bottom gets multiplied together and stays on the inside. So if you've used the factor tree method before, it's the same method. The only difference now is we're looking for sets of threes as opposed to a pair. All right, looking at B. Same root. These are both fourth roots, so all we need to do is just divide those numbers. This becomes the fourth root of 80 divided by 5, which is 16. And the fourth root of 16, we actually know. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. All right, on the next one, cube roots. Again, this same idea, we had the same root. So I can go ahead and multiply the top two together to get the cube root of 24. Now I can divide. And I get the cube root of 12. I almost said 2. That won't simplify. There's no, no perfect cubes I can take out. There's no sets of 3 if I break this down into its factors. So that is as simplified as we can get. 
All right, moving on. The cube root of 120. So again, method you choose is up to you. Think about what perfect square you can divide out, or we'll break it down into its factors. So 120 ends in a 0, so 12 and 10. I'm left with all prime numbers at the bottom, and I'm looking for a set of 3. I have a set of three twos. That means 2 goes on the outside. What's left over stays on the inside. So this is 2 cubed root of 15. All right. This one uh, actually looks like our rational exponents, um, but what we consider here, there's actually two ways we can work this out. In order to multiply or divide our, our roots, we either need to have the same root or the same base. So what we can do here to make this a little bit easier, um, if you look at the top, 16 to the 2 thirds times 16 to the 5 thirds, they both have a base of 16. So since they both have a base of 16, I can follow my exponent rules. This can become 16, I can add those exponents to the 7 thirds. So now at the bottom, I have 2 to the 7 thirds. Well, if both of those are raised to the 7 thirds power, then I can write this as 16 over 2 to the 7 thirds power which means that this is 8 to the 7 thirds power, which I can actually evaluate. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the 7th is, uh, I think, 128. So again, in order to kind of combine some of these together, I really couldn't do anything with this in its current form. What I also could have done, though, if you wanted to, I could rewrite this 16, 16 to the 2 thirds. 16 is 2 to the 4th. I could write this as 2 to the 4th to the 2 thirds. So I could rewrite that as 2 to the 8 thirds. And then I could rewrite this one as 2 to the 4th to the 5 thirds and make that 2 to the 20 thirds. And then I would end up with 2 to the... So if I have 2 to the 8 thirds times 2 to the... Where was I? Sorry. 2 to the 20 thirds over 2 to the 7 thirds. Again, those are now all the same bases. So I've got 2 to the 28 thirds at the top, 2 to the 7 thirds at the bottom. That becomes 2 to the 21 thirds, which is 2 to the 7th, which is 128. So a different way to get there, just depending on whatever you think is easiest. Um, the big thing to understand there, though, is in order to do these operations, again, you either need to have the same base, and then you can apply exponent properties, or you need to have the same root, and then you can rewrite um, using those radical properties. All right, this next one again gives us a kind of a similar idea. At the top, I have the same root. So I can rewrite this as the cube root of 54. At the bottom, I have the same root. So I can make that the sixth root of 4. The problem here again, though, is, well, this doesn't quite match up. There's not really anything I can do if I have different roots. So I need to be able to find a way to rewrite this. So again, a couple different ways you could do that. What I'll use is rational exponents. I think that makes it easier to see. The sixth root of 2 is 2 to the 1 sixth. Since I have the same base, I can add those exponents together. When I add those exponents together, I get 2 to the 2 sixth, which is 2 to the 1 third. So this becomes the cube root of 2. Now that you have the same root, go ahead and divide them, and you get the cube root of 27. All right, going on to the next one, trying to simplify these roots, uh, this time with variables. Now, I'll tell you right here, um, this is the same video for GT and honors. There's one little distinction in your directions, though. Um, so for GT, your directions do not have the phrase, assume all variables are positive. If you see that in the directions, um, honors, you'll see that in yours, you don't need to worry about uh, this step I'm about to show, one of these steps I'm gonna show you. If you don't see that in the directions, um, then you have one little extra thing to consider. So uh, GT, that'll come up on the edia.app review that you guys do. You'll see uh, it's going to require some use of absolute value. All right, so let's start here with the number. The fourth root of 32, just like we did before. Fourth root, we're looking for a pair of fours. I feel like I'm playing go fish. So I got a lot of twos, but there are four twos at the bottom. So a two can come out, and I'll be left with a two on the inside. All right, well, now let's look at the variables. x to the 6th is like I have x times x times x times x times x times x. So if I'm looking for a set of 4, I have it. x would come out, but there's still an x squared left on the inside. All right, y to the 5th, there's 5 y's. 
Well, I can take out one set of four, and I'd be left with one. Z to the 12th. Well, I could take out three z's, and I wouldn't have any left. Now, if your directions say to assume all the variables are positive, then we are done. If your directions don't say that, one thing you do need to consider is the fact that you cannot take an even root of a negative. So what that means for us is looking at these variables. If x is a, We need to think, if x is a negative number, is that going to throw this off? Well, in this case, it's okay, because if x is a negative number, here on the inside, I'm raising it to the sixth power. So once I raise it to a sixth power, even if it's negative, it's still going to end up as a positive number when I take raise it to the sixth power. The problem here is y. If y is a negative number, and I plug that in, if I raise it to the fifth power, it's going to be a negative, and I can't take the fourth root of a negative. So what I also need to do in my, uh, in my final answer is consider that I need to have the absolute value of y in my solution. Now again, if your directions say to assume your variables are positive, you don't need to worry about that step. If your directions don't say that, though, you need to consider that. GT, um, that you typically will see that for directions on tests and quizzes, um, but like I said, on that EDIA practice, you will need to consider that absolute value step. All right, let's look at the next one. We don't need to worry about any of that absolute value stuff because this is an odd root, so don't worry about it for this one. If you feel comfortable, pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, let's take 40 and break it into its factors. Oops, getting ahead of myself. I have a set of three, a set, a set of twos, so two goes on the outside. I've got a five left on the inside. X to the seventh, I could take out a pair of X's and I'd have one left. Y to the twelfth, I could take out four sets of three, none left. Z, I could take out one Z and I'd be left with two on the inside. All right, adding and subtracting, just like it was for square roots, you have to have the same type of radical, and you have to have the same number on the inside. So if we don't, we need to simplify. So the cube root of 40, we'll break it down, and actually we just did break it down. The cube root of 40 is 2 cube root 5. So if I have 2 cube roots of 5, and add another 2 cube roots of 5 to it, I have 4 cube roots of 5. So again, the more comfortable you are with the square root properties, the easier today is going to be. You'll notice it's the same properties, uh, the same style. We're just doing a little bit extra with these different roots. All right, looking at this next one, um, this is another example where we need to rationalize. So this is not rationalized right now. Uh, we have a root in the bottom. And unlike square roots, I can't just multiply by the fifth root of 8. Because if I multiply by the fifth root of 8, I'm going to get the fifth root of 64. And the fifth root of 64, although it can simplify, the fifth root of 64 is not actually uh, something that is going to, it's still going to be a root. So instead, we need to figure out what does this really need to be the fifth root of? So let's think of a number that we know the fifth root of. I know the fifth root of 32. The fifth root of 32 is just 2. So if I want to get the fifth root of 32 on the bottom, I need to multiply by the fifth root of 4. And if I multiply the bottom, I also multiply the top. And now my answer is rationalized. Whoops, sorry about that. All right, another one. Uh, this is another case where, again, we're going to need to rationalize. So this is the cube root of 4 over the cube root of 9x. So I need to think, what cube root do I need to multiply by in order to get the cube root of something that will work out to be an even number? Well, I know the cube root of 27. I also know the cube root of x cubed. So in order to get there, I would need to multiply by 3 and x squared. So multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. That gives me the cube root of 12x squared at the top. And then the bottom, that would just simplify to 3xy. Or sorry, 3x. All right, if you feel comfortable, pause the video, try this next one. All right, so again, fifth root of 3 over the fifth root of 4. I need to figure out what do I need to multiply by to get something that I know the fifth root of. Well, I know the fifth root of, and I just realized, I apologize, guys, your example has an x, y cubed at the bottom. There we go. All right, so let me go ahead and include that. Um, so what I would need to multiply by 
in order to get that perfect uh, fifth power, I know the fifth root of 32. So I'm going to multiply by the fifth root of 8 to get the 32, x to the fourth to get x to the fifth, and y squared to get that whole number 1. Whatever you multiply the bottom by, you also multiply the top by. So I get the fifth root of 24 at the top, x to the fourth, y squared. Then at the bottom, I would have the fifth root of 32, which is 2, the fifth root of x to the fifth, which is x, and the fifth root of y to the fifth, which is just y. All right, so now into this next one. One thing that can sometimes make your life easier. We don't always have to rationalize, okay? In this case, these are both cube roots. If they're both cube roots, you can just divide the expressions. It's the same thing as this. So to make your life easier, just use your exponent properties. I can subtract those. This becomes x to the eighth, y to the fourth. So the cube root of x to the eighth, we're looking for sets of three. I can take out two. I can take out one set from the y's. And I'm left with an x squared and a y on the inside. All right, more rationalizing. This is actually rationalizing you probably did in geometry. Um, what we're going to do is multiply by the conjugate. Uh, if you, that word doesn't sound familiar, we did that with complex numbers. Remember, if I had 1 minus 2i, I multiplied by 1 plus 2i as the conjugate. The reason we multiply by the conjugate is because it gives us a difference of squares, and those middle terms cancel out. So I would multiply by 5 minus root 3 at the bottom, 5 minus root 3 at the top, and the reason I do that is because that 5 plus or 5 root 3 and negative 5 root 3 will cancel. So I'll just have 25 minus 3, which is 5 minus root 3 over 22. Same thing here, multiply by the conjugate, root 6 plus root 2. We multiply the by the conjugate because the middle terms cancel. So I get root 6 plus root 2 at the top, and then I have 6 minus 2 at the bottom. So I do think the hardest thing today probably is the rationalizing. Um, it's just a little bit difficult to figure out what do I multiply by? Um, is it rationalized? And I think that's the hardest part. So we are almost done. I know this is a longer day with a lot of little rules. The good news is for both classes, next class we are not doing anything new. We're going to spend another day working on these properties. So you're going to have a lot of time to let this sink in. All right, again, on this next one, what we need to consider, same base and same power. So since we have the same base and the same power, I can add those together, and I have 12 times 9 to the 2 thirds power. All right, these last two, um, again, this is a case where I think it's easier to work with rational exponents. There are multiple ways to work these problems out, depending on what's easiest for you. What you cannot do, though, is just square this and say, okay, now it's square root because that changes the expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these with rational exponents. So this is going to be 8 to the 1 fourth, x to the 1 half, y to the 3 fourths, times 2 to the 1 half, x to the 1 half, y to the 1 half. And I apologize if the bell rings in the middle of this. We're getting kind of close. So now, same basis, you can add exponents. x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half is x y to the 3 fourths times y to the 1 half. I had to get a common denominator, but that becomes y to the 5 fourths. Now the problem here is that I have 8 to the 1 fourth and 2 to the 1 half. I don't have the same base or the same root. But what I can do is I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the third. And then a power to a power, multiply, that becomes 2 to the 3 fourths. So now I have 2 to the 3 fourths times 2 to the 1 half. Same base. I can add those exponents. So that becomes 2 to the 5 fourths. Now I will tell you typically in the directions, if you start with radicals, you need to end with radicals. If you start with rational exponents, you need to end with rational exponents. Um, but I'll go ahead and finish this one up. So this would be x times the fourth root of y to the fifth, 2 to the fifth which is 32. Since it's a radical, I can still simplify. 
okay? Two to the fifth, we already know that. We can take out a two. So this would become two x y, and I'm left with y times two. I'll write it as two y though. All right, last one. If you feel comfortable, try this one. It's still a little tough. Um, we are gonna rationalize, but again, I think rational exponents make this one a little bit. Sorry guys, rational exponents make this one a little bit easier to do. So this is gonna be x to the three halves, y to the one half, x to the one half, y to the one fourth. So using our exponent properties, I can subtract. So this becomes x to the two over two, which is just one. One half minus one fourth would just be y to the one fourth. At this point, we don't have to worry about rationalizing anymore. This becomes x times the fourth root of y. And we're done. All right, so like I said, I know this is a lot, um, but the good news is next class we are not doing anything new. We're just going to spend more time working on these properties, giving you guys some extra practice.